Hey guys, Tucker Antel here with another Tucker's Tutorial video. It's Wednesday Workout, where every week I share a different exercise or etude or pattern I like to practice. Today's exercise is actually featuring my favorite scale of all time, the chromatic scale, which features every single note, all 12 of them. Um, it is extremely useful for improvisation uh, for many reasons. And there are many different ways you could practice the scale to get fluent, not just starting at the bottom, going to the top, and back down to the bottom like uh, many of your music books might see. So um, you can find the sheet that goes along with what I'm going to be talking about today on my website at tuckerantel.com. Click on the tutorial section and all the videos and the sheet music will be located there. So at the top of the page, I just have the chromatic scale written from low C uh, to high C, two octaves. But you really want to play it from the lowest part of your instrument to the highest part. So uh, for saxophone players, make sure you start on that low B flat and get to know those spatula keys, as you call them, with your left pinky. And also get all the way up to those palm keys, or as high as you've have gotten uh, in your playing so far. Um, the greatest way to practice this is with a metronome to make sure that your timing is excellent. And to ensure that you're really not cheating, it's great to slur these uh, scales and exercises so that you're focusing on just the fingerings and you're not focusing on anything having to do with articulation. You can do that stuff in another time too, but if you slur all of them, then you can really hear the timing of your fingerings. You want to avoid any mistimings or, or uh, inconsistencies between your fingerings that might sound like this. <sighs> too quickly or you're having a brain fart and it takes you a second to realize what the next note needs to be. All of these things are going to translate to bad time and uh, uh, not being able to play very smoothly when you uh, want to play this in a solo. So start slow enough to where everything is perfectly matching the metronome and also make sure that your fingers aren't moving more than they have to. A really good technique and to be able to play quickly and smoothly, you don't want to lift up uh, your fingers all the way up here. Um, each key only needs to move a certain amount, so if you can get to know what that distance is and move no more than that, um, you'll be playing with a maximum efficiency. And uh, you start to speed that up, and then your fingers are moving very precisely. You can play very quickly like that, and it will also help with the timing issue we talked about. So um, right off the bat, that's some things to practice. One of the things to help with that I like to do is to practice the chromatic sc uh, scale in short little sections, or loops as I call them in the, uh, on the sheet. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this, uh, different distances, but I've written down four loops, all with a distance of a major third. The first one starts on a C, gets up to an E, and gets back down to a C. So you just want to kind of do it um, over and over and over again. <laughs> so comfortable with it that your hands are almost moving by themselves. This is also great if, for instance, there's a certain fingering or certain note that you're having trouble with and your fingers are being kind of stubborn or they're moving too much, you can just practice just that part of the chromatic scale instead of working out the whole thing. That goes for general practice as well. So uh, the next one on there is an E flat to a G. Maybe you want to practice uh, your F sharp into a G fingering. <laughs> Kind of sounds like Flight of the Bumblebee, which is, of course, most of the chromatic scale. Um, you can practice larger distances as well, but um, it's, it's sort of up to you. And, uh, you know, for saxophone players, if you really uh, are not the most comfortable with what is going on here with your spatula keys, practice low B flat to B to C sharp to C, uh, to C to C sharp and then D. So make your loop B flat to D. Or if you want to work on these palm keys, C sharp to F. until it becomes sort of automatic and you get that whole sequence out. So um, once you've gotten really um, proficient with the chromatic scale and can move around your instrument really quickly, um, you can start doing some different patterns. So uh, right under those loops, I have one of my favorite patterns of all time. It is, uh, it's sort of the equivalent of doing uh, thirds when you're doing a major scale, where you're sort of leapfrogging every note and then going back and resetting. Of course, we're doing the chromatic scale, so that means that we're gonna be doing uh, half steps and whole steps. So I have it written out that we go down a half step, then we leap up a whole step, down a half, up a whole, down a half, up a whole, kind of a staircase like that. And then descending as well. When you're 
practicing these, it's actually uh, important to make sure that you practice them two different ways. First is to start it on the beat, but also starting off the beat. It might not sound that different from where you're sitting, um, and you're not playing anything differently, but it feels a lot different because you're placing the notes uh, on a different part of the beat. So it's important to get used to that feeling so that you can be flexible when you're improvising. That last pattern I just played, uh, sort of going up in half steps but descending, is, uh, is heard and used everywhere. You'll hear it in all sorts of solos. It's great filler um, to, to uh, help you get around between your licks. And it's, uh, it's, just a, it's just a great it's a great thing to know how to do on any part of your horn. Perhaps you want to do uh, the workout from last week, but you're having trouble connecting a couple of them. You can kind of use some chromaticisms uh, like this. <laughs> So I'm kind of using a lot of chromatic stuff in between um, the licks once I um, get, get, get to where I want to go. Um, and there's all sorts of, of solo uh, examples of this that are too long to list. Um, so that is uh, basically the, our first foray into chromatic patterns. There'll be more coming in the future, but the very next video you're going to see is the Friday finish line number three, where, where I'm going to be playing a lick for you guys to finish, so perhaps you can use some chromaticisms in your submissions. So I look forward to that, and uh, subscribe on my YouTube channel, and leave any comments um, with tips, suggestions, or requests for anything that you would like to see. And I look forward to seeing you guys then.